Hi, I'm Jackie Partridge and my website is www.jackiepartridge.com where I share different resources, my artwork uh, with you as well. If you would like to join my mailing list, you can head over to www.jackiepartridge.com slash shop where I will send you a discount code as well as some exclusive painting tutorials that won't be shared um, on other social media platforms and that's just exclusive to members joining my mailing list. Uh, so we're going to be talking about mixing greens and where to put them in your landscape. So in the foreground or the front of your landscape is going to be where you have the brightest green. This is the green that is closest to you. If you are standing in this field, it would be the green grass that is right close in front of your feet. So this is going to be your brightest, your most vibrant, your lightest green. Then in the middle ground, sort of in the middle of the field, we have a darker green, which is less bright because it's further away. Further in the distance, we have a dull green. So it's less vibrant, more dull, more of a brown reddish tone. And then further in the distance, because of the atmosphere and the particles in the air, it makes colors have a bluish tinge. So you'll have more of a bluish green. And then even further in the distance, it becomes a lighter green, but it still has that bluish tinge because it's further, further into the distance, you know, miles and miles away. All right, so we are going to begin by mixing our different greens in our landscape. So I have a cup of water here. I have an old rag to uh, clean my brushes. And I have a kind of medium round brush. You can use whatever brush size you want. It doesn't really matter. And then I have my paints. I have some titanium white. I have primary yellow and I have a sort of primary crimson red. I also have ultramarine blue. I have a second blue of cobalt blue, which is a bit lighter, and I have some Mars black. Um, so I tend to use a lot of Rio Tech paint because the quality is still really good and it's at a cheaper price point. Um, and if you want to see more about my artist materials, I have an art supplies video that you can check out as well. Uh, so to start, we're going to start just by mixing green. So when we mix green, we're mixing two primaries together. So we're mixing blue and yellow. So I have two different blues to show you that the green is going to be slightly different. So I'm just going to start by pulling off some yellow and bringing it over to this section of my palette and cleaning my brush off. I'm going to grab some cobalt blue and I have about equal amounts of the blue and yellow and I'm going to mix that together to get my first green number one. So the thing about landscape painting is it's really good to have a variety of colors, a variety of greens is going to help it make, help it look more realistic. So our next green that we're making is with a different blue. So this is an ultramarine blue. It's a lot darker than the cobalt blue and going to grab some of that primary yellow again and mix that together. So since it's a darker blue, it's going to make a slightly darker green. So it's not very noticeable, but it is still different. So it's good to kind of experiment and try with different blues. 
So if you have different blues, it's good to just experiment and try. Um, so now to make a lighter blue, more bright, we're going to add yellow to the greens that we mixed. So I'm adding more yellow to the first green that I mixed, which is with the cobalt paint. And this is going to create like a lime green, kind of brighter yellow. So this would be the type of grass, the type of green that would be in our foreground. And I'm just doing this painting on a watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is a good kind of resource to practice with as you practice mixing your colors um, instead of wasting canvases or a canvas board that would be more expensive. So I like to test out the colors that I'm mixing beforehand and it's good practice for when you're beginning. So now I've added yellow to the green that I mixed with the ultramarine blue. So again, it's slightly different. It has a bit of a darker tinge. It's kind of difficult to see, but it is different. It is a bit darker. Um, and again, it's good to have that variety if you do have other blue paint, different shades of blue like cobalt, ultramarine, thalo, they're all gonna produce slightly different greens. So now that we have our brighter green, we're going to make a darker green. So with the original green that we have, we're just going to add a little bit of Mars black to it. And you can do the same if you have other blues. Just to kind of compare. So this would be more of a color that's in our middle ground or if there was shade under a tree or something like that, that would be a good green to use. Um, so now, moving on, we're going to take our original green, so the cobalt mixed with primary yellow or ultramarine mixed with primary yellow, and add a little bit of red to that green. So adding the red is just going to dull the color uh, because red is a complementary color of green. And then for a green in the distance, you can add some extra blue. So if you made your green with cobalt blue, you can add some more cobalt blue to it. And it just becomes more of a bluey green. And you can really play around with it and add even more blue if you want. And then if you're making another green with another blue, you can add some more blue to that as well. And now you can make sure your brush is nice and clean. You can go ahead and add some white to those, to that blue that you made. So 
So this would be kind of far out in the distance. You can see that they're different. Um, and then it's good to just continue to experiment. So you can try adding, you know, a bit of yellow to that blue with the white that you added. And that kind of creates a faded bright yellow. Um, or you could add some white to some of the dark green that you mixed. And then it kind of becomes this gray green. So I really encourage you just to experiment and see how many different greens you can come up with that are still different and really, you know, test yourself and experiment and try to see how many you can, can create because the more greens you add, the more realistic it's going to be. So this is adding extra red to some of the green that we mixed before, which kind of becomes this green, brown, reddish green. It be a fun challenge to set a timer and see how many different greens you can make. And also by adding water to some of your green, you can make it really watery and create a wash, kind of like watercolor as well. So I encourage you to continue to fill up your page and try making as many greens as you can. Add yellow, add white, add black, add a little bit of red and see what you come up with.